everybody how you doing out there hope all is well i'm going to just share this with a few sites so uh, please pardon the bit of a delay while i'm doing that but uh if you have some jazz song requests especially or if you want to hear a couple of little classical things i'm not really a great classical player but uh I will do them on the Adams and the Besson. That's what we're going to compare today, just these two horns. I felt like uh, since I got this Besson, or <laughs> I call it a Besson, but the Adams back, I wanted to uh, share that with everybody. Um, so just give me a couple seconds while I share these, this link with a, a few people. Hope you all are doing fantastic. It's a nice day here in Kansas City. I hope you're having a nice day wherever you might be. And uh, happy Labor Day for my friends here in America, America. Uh, and as always, thank you for your great support. We've been uh, working hard here at the shop, trying to get things running as smoothly as possible. We're getting there. Um, also, you might have noticed that uh, we have sent out a bunch of new emails. Uh, we're trying a little bit of a new email software. So sorry if we're um, going a little crazy with those. Uh, you can always unsubscribe and still be a fan of the shop. I understand completely, but here we are. So I'm going to go back to the live stream. Hold on one second as I, oh, there I am. There I am. Noodle time. Yes, noodle time. And I have my play, I have my play along with a speaker, so we'll actually do a little bit more noodly than before. But I wanted to first show you these two horns. Hold on. Uh, First, if you've been to the shop and you've had a chance to play, this is my uh, one of my dream horns, and uh, this is the, the 1940 Besson Breveté. Um, this is a French Besson. It's been restored by my good friend and amazing trumpet worker, craftsman restorer Josh Landris. This is, uh, I call it patches because it has a bunch of patches all around it. Uh, it's a fun horn. It's one of my favorite trumpet sounds ever actually. So what I will first start is with this horn. I'll play a ballad for you all. So does anybody out there in, in live trumpet land have a ballad suggestion that I might know? I'll give you about 30 seconds while I play a couple notes on this. We're going to compare the Besson with this. And this is the Adams A5 trumpet that Neil Adams and I uh, built at the factory a few years ago. Well, Neil built it. I was just more involved with the playing, testing, and the, the design aspects of it. Uh, I sold this to one of my friends who uh, I always gave a right for first uh, refusal. So once he decided he wanted to part with it, I bought it back and got it back a few days ago, and it's not for sale. Neither of these actually are for sale. Sorry if you if you do end up liking. I fall in love too easily. Great song. Let's do it. Hold on, we're going to cue up the uh, player. So if I could um, use the alphabet, it would be even better. But uh, no, we're getting close. Oh, we're getting really close. I know this is just riveting. Uh, there we are. So let's. Uh, Hopefully you can hear this. So we're going to start with the Besson, and I'll switch between choruses. So that was the 
Bassett. And it's great to play along. We'll just keep playing along no matter if I stop or not. And here is the Adams. demonstration. The Adams at least initially is a little bit darker and I think that's partially to the due to the fact that it's just it's a tighter horn. Um, the Adams is 150 times easier to play and this is the one thing I found out recently. I took uh, the Besson on a uh, gig. We did a gig for uh, the Charlie Parker birthday celebration. There's a couple weeks of awesome concerts here in uh, Kansas City uh, and I took the took that horn on the uh, concert, and we, it was just a real struggle, to be honest, to play it. Um, I loved, oh, Patrick, thanks so much for coming today, man. We loved having you, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad you got a chance to play this horn, too. I didn't know if you played the best, and I'm sorry if you didn't, but it's a fantastic instrument. Uh, back to that gig, and this was sort of the, the kicker for me, because I hadn't played that best on a gig in quite some time. Uh, the... Besson was just a real struggle to play, and I was I was fighting all night, and I really did not enjoy playing that night. And I was like, oh, man. That made me remember why I actually like playing the Adams instruments, because they're so much easier to play. Uh, initially, this horn, I think, does have a darker sound when you um, listen to it. I'll play a couple little things. Let's play a couple Arvin's exercises. At least. We'll start on the Adams this time. Um, Anyways, just so even, so even and clean, and it has a very beautiful richness to the sound. Here's the Besson. hear that I don't know if you guys can hear that and I hope you can you can actually if you want to hijack the thread you go somewhere else no I'm just kidding so as long as you hijack the thread with uh, by uh, K if you guys are hijacking it I've got an even better idea usually when there's a hijacking involved there's money so if there's a hijacking involved you guys can be sure to order something on the web store and that will make the hijacking go a little bit easier cool Anyways, and watch the viewership goes from five million to zero. So um, this is just more work, and it makes sense. Let me just use the same equation I always tell people: the difference between a 1968 Ford Mustang and a 19 uh, or 2018 Mustang. There is a ton of differences. You know, the 1968 has that that visual aesthetic that you can't get get around. Um, the, the performance of the cars are probably about the same fly eagles fly. Um, Mike, you are now banned from this list. So, but no, I could play, uh, uh, Tom Brady has five Super Bowl rings and uh, I guess the Eagles finally have one. We'll, we'll play that. What does that sound like? Oh, I know what it sounds like. Mind you, I've had this session for probably, 
I would say 10 years now, so I know how to play this one really well. The the Adams I've only had for, well, I had it for a few months, and then I sold it to my friend who then uh, sold it back to me. So, And I only got it back on Wednesday. So I haven't had much time to reacquaint myself to that one. But uh, what what happens is if you're playing a ballad, you're playing something slow, I don't think it's, a, it's really a big issue. But if you're playing something like... Um, something where they have a lot of fast passages and I haven't played that in about 12 years not as bad as my uh, version of Halsey Stevens this morning Patrick I know and you should be at the festival but I gotta pull this slide in you can hear I am and I'm not I'm not making the horn work you know, there's a thing that people say, well, great trumpet players make great instruments work. And yes, there's some merit to that. If you go to a concert and hear like the amazing trumpet players of our generation, like you go listen to Arturo or Tomas Gonch or James Morrison, these guys, these like super level players, they'll make any single thing work. My belief is I want the trumpet that sounds the best but is the easiest to play because especially now doing all of this, selling instruments and being in the shop more than I'm practicing, I need an instrument that actually makes my life a lot easier. But Aratunian, you actually want to hear me play the Aratunian? Let's see if I even remember the thing. <laughs> need to sheet music but i probably messed that up too but either way um back to jazz tunes if you have suggestions um i can actually play a little bit of the beginning of palsy stevens horn and I won't deny it I think the sound on this trumpet this best in trumpet maybe is the finest sound I've ever had in any trumpet but this is the equation do you want to work harder if I was practicing like I used to which was six to eight hours a day 68 hours a day that would be cool but six to eight hours a day maybe I would choose this I practice an hour and a half to two hours a day now hopefully more like sometimes on the weekends I get four or five a day but uh, if I could afford the time to practice and ignore my business, uh, I, I would. So is it the Tom Stevenson out? Rest in peace, my friend. So uh, back to jazz tunes. Ask me a, to play a, a, ah, let me play a bebop song. This is also where you'll hear the difference. I never really finished my Ford story. Uh, where we're comparing 1968 Mustang, the, the bullet car, Steve McQueen. If you haven't seen that car chase, it's basically the only thing in that movie worth seeing um, versus a 2018. Well, let's go to safety. What car is safer? I'm, I think the, the 1968 had, had a lap safe uh, belt, you know, seat, seat belt. The 2018 has five, six, eight airbags, you know, better braking, 
better acceleration in the new car, you know, although the, the other cars maybe has a meatier, richer, warmer sound, you know, like, uh, hey, it's kind of similar to a trumpet. Uh, better stereo in the, and you don't have just an AM radio in the 1968, you have, now you have um, Apple CarPlay or whatever in the 2018. So we can use the same uh, comparison on modern trumpets versus vintage instruments as well. And I love vintage instruments. If you come to the shop here in Kansas City, you'll see 100 vintage instruments. Donnelly it is. You win the, you win the prize, which is the prize is uh, you could take Kyle Lambert home for the weekend and make sure you feed him. He sometimes needs some watering too, you know. Uh, and he, sometimes he likes um, interesting water as well. Uh, so let's do this. Let's start on the Besson, play a couple choruses. Um, ooh, I was trying. This was the last tempo I played Donna Lee. Let's see if I can do it. Cards out there that was uh, quarter notes with 360. Let's play it at a more reasonable tempo, let's say. Um, that must have been one of my Skype poor Skype students this week. I said, Hey, let's play something fast. Ugh. Okay, moving right along, let's play it now. How about tempo de fun? What I'll do is I'll play the melody on this and play one course, then I'll stop the player back and I'll do a melody and one course on the atoms. Well, you just heard how kind of easy that was, even at 360 on the atoms, but uh. Here we go. This is quarter note equals 265, a little bit more reasonable. solo hopefully hopefully better solo this is the Adams a5 Besson-esque I call it Excalibur if you're just tuning in we're doing a comparison between a 1940 Besson that's in my personal collection that I truly believe has the best trumpet sound I've ever owned of any trumpet and this one which is an Adams a5 which was built last September a little bit of retro and Old and new. So we just did Donnelly. Hopefully you can remember that sound. This will go back and we'll do the same thing on the Adams. One chorus melody, one solo. Let me actually now try to play right before. You know what's funny? I'll, 
I'll freely admit this. I play the, the tune too fast, and when I play it slower, I can't play it. So anywho, but uh, thanks for tuning in, Mike. What am I using to play in the background? That's a great question. It's uh, just my little Mackie. Oh, well, I'll show you. Let me show you. This is a little bit of a setup that I use for teaching all the time. Um, and by the way, if you're interested in taking some lessons, I teach at the shop here in Kansas City on Mondays, but I also do Skype lessons on Mondays. So you can see here, Donnelly. Oh, yeah, you notice I missed that change. I missed this change. Oh, I forgot that one. No, I'm just kidding. Well, sort of. This is iRealBook. Uh, it's a $10 app you can get online. It is basically what I consider. Let me pull you back up here. I consider it to be the jazz metronome. So basically, I'm not really trying to be inspired by the, the gong, 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 but I am using that for the metronomical purposes. Uh, so anyways, that is, that. the last clip was the Adams. So I know the Besson sounds nicer, and I, like, I think you are right. I think the Besson has this one in a million sound. In fact, someone came to the shop years ago and offered me $10,000 for that Besson trumpet, and I said no. Uh, if you wanted to, to buy it for 20, I'd probably consider it. But it literally is the finest sounding trumpet. But it's not fun to play. So then you say, oh, well, do you go into the practice room? Okay, yeah, sure. I mean, I try to practice as much as possible. And maybe, like I said earlier, if I was practicing 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, the kicker was me taking it on a performance recently where I really struggled, struggled uh, to, to play the way I want to play. Uh, I felt like the horn was completely home holding me back. Metronomical. Is that a George Bush word? So we know politics at Austin Custom Brass. Sorry, I'm backing up. Uh, but I, I will uh, play a couple more ballads. It's a little bit. It's really clear, I think, in my opinion. Maybe you all can chime in and please chime in. Um, it's really clear to hear how much easier the Adams is to play. I don't think there's any denying that. It's also, I think... I think a little clearer that you hear how nice the Besson sounds. And like I said, anybody who comes to the Kansas City shop can play the Besson as long as we watch you because it's, it literally is, it took me forever to find a Besson that played like that one. And I have bought probably 12 or 15. Have some iced tea. Mm. But uh, it's one of those things that you, you know, you find one of those horns. So. Donnelly, composer, Miles, or Bird. Really think it was. I think it I think it was both of them. I, I know that's like such a politically correct way of saying it, but um, I think Miles kind of in his autobiography is stretching the truth a little bit. Uh, but you hear elements of Miles' trumpet playing in the song, so I'm not sure. You know, like, okay, we know that Bird was the master of the altered scale, but you can hear early miles, especially 1948 to 1952 or so, even 1954, really playing, you know, bop. Not necessarily playing bop like Dizzy playing bop or Fat Savaro playing bop or Howard McGee playing bop or like in terms of the trumpet players that were around. Um, but you can hear him working on it. Did he write Donnelly to, did he write Donnelly to, uh, you know, work on his technique? Maybe. But I honestly think that was a collaboration. So, but uh, definitely, I think both. Let's go back to a ballad. And Tim, that was an awesome question. Thanks for chiming in. You know, it's always great that a, that a super awesome musician like yourself, who's not a trumpet player, although I don't know, maybe you play trumpet, like, and don't tell anyone, uh, tunes into these. But uh, again, if you're just tuning in, we're comparing two trumpets, just two today, not the whole gamut of trumpets that we have here. We're comparing old versus new. And I think that's a, a fun thing to do. Uh, maybe if I get a little serious, more serious in the shed over time, I can compare them a little bit better. But uh, right now, the old, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, an etude possibly. Okay, let's see if I can remember an etude. Now, all my etude books I just loaded to my iPad. But uh, actually, I could probably put one up. Hold on. Ah, good. Let's play a little bit of an etude. You'll have to pardon me while I load something up, but it won't it won't take too long. So this is thanks to my new awesome super assistant John Kratzer, who loaned me a um, 
he loaned me uh, his uh, iPad for a gig that I was doing for him. And uh, it was so great because he let me uh, borrow his iPad and I found out how just easy it is to, to have an app with your music. So let's play a, a Charlier. Oh, that's, ooh, that's really nice. You, you only get to see that for a second. That's my, uh, those are my lessons from Charlie Banakis. Um, I still don't know really how to use this. So, but we will play a Charlier once, uh, once I get it loaded. It might be really small font, but that's my fault. Uh, again, thank you. Body and soul. We'll play body. After we do this etude, we'll play body and soul on the two horns. And I'll switch. I'll try to switch half choruses on each one. So let's play something that I uh, sort of can play. <laughs> so many good things in here. Let's play something a little bit technical. Here we go. That's good. Can I put this right here? Then you get the best view of the house. So, so this is, uh, I won't play the whole thing. I'll just play a little bit of each one. Uh, first, we'll start with the best because I started with the Adams, I think, last time. Maybe I didn't, but here's a little Charlier. when you have a not a supersized tablet. I'm like, wow, that is really small. And then, yeah. Here's the atoms on the same thing. small that is that's small and there's all this blank space so i'm working on it while techno tech, technological advancements are awesome they're also bad for my terrible eyesight um and i when i used to play charlie i used to play these all from memory so good stuff for me to learn how to practice again practice all right someone requested don uh not donnelly someone just requested donnelly we're gonna do body and soul and i'm gonna look at your comments in just a second so if you put a comment and I've ignored it, I apologize profusely. And again, thank you all for coming in and thank you all for supporting our shop. Hopefully you've checked out, we've done some, some updates to the shop, both uh, in terms of our shop actual, um, if you go to our web store, but also um, some of our emails and things like that. But really appreciate all your great support. It helps support me and supports my students. Um, uh, students, yeah, my students, and also my my colleagues that I, that I have to end up paying them, or else they get really mad when I don't. Uh, let's do body and soul. We'll switch it around. We'll start with the atoms, and we'll go to the to the besson. Again, if you have comments, yeah, buts, yay, nays, yeah, buts, things like that, feel free to chime in. And again, thank you for watching. So here we go. Let's speed it up a little bit. Atoms first. Half course is a piece.
one-handed and try to switch between them a little quicker. Maybe this won't be possible. To that initial point and i knew the point would hopefully convey on this video and I, again thank you for watching that the adams play significantly better than the besson does and i'm not even talking like a percentage i'm talking a multiple so probably five times better that's a but the besson might sound twice as good as the adams well no I, that's not true. I, I was thinking, and you guys, please chime in. Uh, I think the Besson might sound 60% or 40%. It's hard to put a, a quantitative number on this because you're, you're factoring so many things into how a trumpet plays with a, with a, when you put the uh, human element into things. You know, the fact that this trumpet plays so much easier than the Besson makes my life easier so I don't have to think about playing as much. Then when I put the Besson in, I go, oh, what a sound. So then you'd say this. Well, this is an easy answer, Trent. Why don't you get the horn rebuilt? Why don't you go spend the money, get it rebuilt? We've done that. I've done that. I had an amazing con uh, cornet that was from 1936. And it was uh, incredible. Uh, brevete or breveta, however you want to say it. I am not French. I apologize to all my friends out there that are laughing at me, badgering that language. Uh, but they say, well, why don't you just get it rebuilt? Because I, I did this. And, and here's, here's what I did is I took this con uh, cornet that I used to play all the time. It was uh, an ADA, a Victor, and it was amazing. And the moment I had it worked on, and I had it worked on by us at the shop, also, Anderson did our replating. They do all of our valve replating, and they do most of the people in the industry's valve replating. Um, when I got it back, it didn't sound right. It didn't have the same sound. It was an amazing horn and way better to play. But for what I was looking for, that exact sound and that exact color, the, the, the concept didn't do it for me. So as I take a sip here, please uh, share a few more comments, suggestions, uh, yeah buts, things like that. Uh, again, I hope everybody's having an awesome day happy labor day to my friends in america and uh, we will be closed on monday so if you email us i might answer you but probably i'll be sitting outside with a iced tea like this and uh at a barbecue yeah, who knew that uh people would barbecue in, in kansas city um um Maybe Kyle's out there. Kyle asked for a song or John. They're, they're sort of watching, but they're working. Um, next question I always get, and I got it when I had this custom Adams in the shop before. It was like, can I get exactly that? The answer is probably, probably not. There's a couple features on this Adams trumpet that don't, they don't make. Um, one is the front facing tuning slide. So you see that the normal trumpets, the side goes this way. This is a front facing slide like the Besson trumpet or later on copied by people like uh, Benj. This also has a very cool valve block. It's a bronze valve block on the lower cluster, nickel silver. Well, I don't even have to flip it upside down. Nickel silver on the upper cluster with that classic, sort of what I call the classic A5 trim. 
it's got a lot of nickel silver, more, much more than in, a, in the standard A5 build. This uh, tuning slide is exactly square. You see how square that is? And it comes with an Amato key. Uh, it's actually an Adams Amato key because Adams actually makes their own uh, water keys. The bell is, is a dead-ish style bell versus if I hit another horn, let's take this uh, amazing chagrel. You hear like a, a, a brighter ping. Uh, I feel personally that a lot of what the best in trumpet sound comes from is the man. Yeah, that, that's completely dead. And I think a lot of it comes with how they tempered the bell, how they annealed the bell, how they formed the bell. And also, if you can see it on this, uh, let me see if I can get this a little closer to the camera. That, that amazing bell bead that's on the vessel. What we did with the Adams was copy that. Copy that, Roger, Roger. Um, but that's some of the differences of the horns. But what do you think of the, the Miha, the cancel version? The older ones, when Zig first started making them in the early 80s, is they're really good. Um, I felt like they didn't have the full Besson sound. Now, I do know that the Cancel Factory has the original mandrel from the Besson Factory. So if anybody's going to be able to make a Besson bell, even though Adams, we made that mandrel for this horn, um, which is pretty cool. That's how amazing Adams is as a company. So go to my head. The form's too long. I'll fall asleep in the middle while playing, but it's a great song. Um, uh, maybe something that's a little less lengthy with crazy uh, form. Uh, like a haunting refrain so but uh if you wanted to order this uh we'll see if my guys are paying attention uh kyle if you're out there roger roger uh can you put the link to build your own a5 trumpet um he'll probably put that up but uh, if not i can share it too it's not a problem but uh if you wanted something like this this exact horn you can um, you could actually just, just call me and order it. It's not a problem. Uh, more song requests, more comments, yeah, buts, things like that. Questions, comments, yeah, buts, happy holidays, all those goody things. But, uh, those, that's where I am. It's like, so that's again, the big question, the big dilemma. I have a Kansas city chiefs, uh, mouthpiece, by the way. Uh, the big dilemma is uh, the fact that do we sacrifice playability for sound? And if I was a full-time professional musician working all the time, I think I might actually. Um, ah, John, thank you, John, John and Kyle, both of you. Yes, there's something, I haven't only played it with this mouthpiece, which is like a 3C, um, but I could play both things with uh, a brighter mouthpiece. Uh, which is my lead mouthpiece, which is my TAZ mouthpiece. There's something that we worked on at the Adams factory that made this trumpet come alive when you played. Um, I'm going to pull this a little further ahead so I don't crush the microphone, even though I will. <laughs> more work 
and I'm actually getting a little bit of a sensation backwards where it feels like it's much more pressure. And the reason for that is because the valves don't have great compression. So they're pretty loose. Just rebuild the valves. If you were listening a few moments ago, you heard my story about how I did that to one of my favorite horns and it ruined it. Uh, it didn't ruin it for the next owner who loves it and is super happy about it, but it ruined it for what I was looking for in a horn to do. So then you say, well, put really thick oil on it. Yes, of course. And we've done that. And that horn has a uh, burp bio three, which if you have a horn, folks, you have a horn with poor valve compression out there, get the burp bio oil. It's the best oil for horns with leaky valves. And it's actually an all natural canola based oil, which actually smells good and it's good for the environment. So if you're, you know, crunchy dude like I am, it's even better for that reason as well. But uh, that's got burp three on it. But if you're playing something fast, it's a little bit of a challenge. Like, uh, here's a, I'll play another Charlie A exercise. I won't actually need, I don't think I need the music for this, but we'll see. Uh, uh, people with their red pencils out there, I pardon, uh, I apologize in advance. Oh, actually, this is Brandt, but they kind of sound similar. So the Charlier that I was thinking about is this. That one, but uh, we'll do the Brandt one instead, which is a uh, the G minor one. Bobby speed. You all know Ricky Bobby speed. I want to go fast. So here's the atoms. Uh, first on that Charlie And I have to tell you, I mean, the difference is that's easy on this horn. The other one, I'm working like crazy to get the same sound. Maybe you can't hear it. And that's, this is the, this is still the dilemma. And I know I've talked to so many professional trumpet players at like really crazy high levels professional trumpet players about how they're willing to sacrifice the efficiency of an instrument for the sound that they get. Oh, so, but this horn, I was like, I, it's almost what I call point and shoot. Here's the brand on this. It's actually too easy almost. my time I waste your time unfortunately trying to play that so but thank you for dead versus live bells yeah and that's something that a lot of manufacturers have a hard time doing it's a lot and that that bell that we made on the atoms is as close as we've ever made on it but it also sacrifices a few things as you know you lose the like a stock a5 I think plays a little bit better in tune than this one stock a5 has a little bit more presence and ring in a lower dynamic it's only when you push that that horn is where it gets it gets ridiculous and you're never going to hear it on on a microphone uh, uh, like that we're doing for a live stream what i'll try to do is set i haven't set up my real recording setup uh with my royal R ribbon microphone and things like that what i'll try to do is maybe do a little sample and have you guys guess which horn it is that'll probably be for uh something next week but I wanted to share this with you because these are thoughts that I have all the time. And, and it's being such a guy who loves vintage trumpets, uh, it's, it's the age old dilemma, you know, vintage horn, you know, sound, color, you know, awesomeness really versus modern horn playability, responsiveness, ease. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever hit it. There are a few companies that, that, that do a good job about this. Of course, Adams does with, I mean, the A5 is A6 and A9 trumpets, which are modeled after vintage trumpets, um, really come close to the moderns. And in fact, in the A6 and the A9, I actually, I actually personally like them way more than their, um, the, you know, the original inspiration because we've done things on the horns to make them play better. But, uh, 
you know, another company that does a great job with taking an older horn and putting it back into a modern world is a company like Shires that, uh, you know, their concept when they started making trumpets, and I know because I was working with them at the very beginning a little bit, um, I have serial number 42 and and uh, was working, hanging with Doc and playing the horns that their concept was like the Bud Herzog, you know, Chicago Symphony mid 50s sound. And, you know, some of those trumpets do that really well. The new Destino does is a great horn. I think we have one for sale, I'm not sure. But, uh, uh, and of course, Bach, you know, like you say, oh, well, everybody plays a Bach. The new Bach anniversary models are fantastic trumpets. They really are. Um, do they play as easy as my Adams? I don't think so. but. That's me, and I'm, of course, if you come to my shop, I'm highly biased. You know, our two favorite brands at the shop are Shaw, Girl, and Adams, and the reason for that is because I love the company, I love the workers, I love the products. So, and that has a lot to, to say, you know, in terms of, you know, the, what I want to sell as a, as a businessman. Sorry for my preaching. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. If you have a couple more song requests, please let me know. If you have something, to, uh, for us to talk about next week, we're doing a few uh, live noodles uh, recordings this weekend. Uh, if you have a couple things that you want me to address, uh, send them, you can always send us an email, info at austincustombrass.com. You can send us a uh, private message here through the shop page. Uh, you can just reach out, reach out, and, and uh, you know, not grab my bald head. Oh, there's a little hair there, but. Um, anyways, I'll play one more song, and uh, I'll let... Uh, I know my guys are watching, so maybe they can chime in. So. That's kind of me pumping the prime there. But I really appreciate everybody coming. I know you have all these things that you can do, and time is so valuable. And I'm really, really thankful for you guys spending a few moments with me. I hope you get something out of this. I hope maybe it sort of, you know, sort of invigorates your thought process of, especially anybody who's looking to possibly buy a new trumpet, to sort of think about what exactly do you want. Any one of us, you know, one thing I pride myself at the shop is that, you know, our core group of four are all great trumpet players. Uh, John is an amazing trumpet player. Kyle's an amazing trumpet player. Josh, who telecommutes for me, who lives in Norfolk, Virginia, is also an incredible trumpet player. Um, and I think Josh is uh, uh, uploading some videos of him playing, so you get to hear him playing. He's a tremendous trumpet player as well. And I'm kind of a hack, so great. Um, yeah, the, you, you know, it's funny we had, oh, but that's a great comment. I, I don't think the Shilky sounds generic at all. Uh, I think the Shilky trumpet, especially like the trumpets, like we had someone come in earlier with a fattest model Shilky. It is, for what it does, it's one of the best trumpets out there that does that. But I feel like there is something, you know, maybe a little bit lacking in the sound color. But the trumpets play so well and they play so easy. What's the trade-off that you you as a player are willing to, to, to sacrifice? So is it 5%? Is it 10%? Is it 100%? Is it 10,000%? I don't know. 10,000%, that'd be cool. I'm giving it my full 110%. John wants to hear anthropology, so you get to hear me bash through some rhythm changes. All righty. Let's see. Unless he wants to, I can yet see if he wants to play with it. Hold on a second. Hey, John. No, well, he's not here. So I'll get to hear me bash from a distance. All right, we'll switch. We'll play choruses on each horn. And uh, you'll get to hear that. Here we go. We'll start with the Adams. It's going to be fast because I want to go fast. <laughs>
weekend. Anywho, I hope you all are doing fantastic. Have a fantastic, if you're from America, have a fantastic Labor Day. If you're not from America, take Monday off. Tell them that I told you that. It's no problem. But stay tuned for the next live noodles. Thanks again for being awesome supporters of Austin Custom Brass. We couldn't do it without you. Hope you all have a fantastic weekend.